Hey everybody, uh, Laughing Boy here. Uh, I'm going to do a quick review video of the Laughing Boy Vermintide Survivor Kit Bash Challenge uh, hosted over on Beasts of War or on Tabletop.com uh, and it really is just a, a bit of fun for me uh, to get involved with the community a bit more over at Beasts of War and Beasts of War have helped obviously have the platform to make this possible uh, and give away a prize for something cool. So I've asked, uh, and the Beast of War team have asked, for someone to put together either an individual character or a team of characters that could potentially be a warband in Vermintide, the video game, which is all about you know surviving against the Skaven Chaos Hordes as they're just constantly attacking and you, you holding off or completing objectives. Uh, the winner of that competition, I'm going to give a digital copy of the um, Collector's Edition of Vermintide 2. Uh, which is you know not recently been been out, uh, so yeah that'd be quite cool. So anyway, uh, it's probably a bit late to get involved in the challenge now, but this was kind of a tester for me to see if this is something I'd like to do in the future, and I think it probably will be. Um, so expect to see more kind of these sorts of challenges coming up in the future with cool prizes that I can give away for them. Uh, so let's jump into it and have a look. So what you can see at the moment is the main page on the Beast of War website. Uh, and it will give you some links to what people are doing. So they thought you could see my, my laugh, my uh, YouTube channel, which you're looking at now. You can see a video here of actually um, someone who did a very impressive selection of this, given the anniversary of the game. Uh, and then just some details how you can get involved using the project system. Uh, and as you can see, it's going to end this week. So this is me doing a review so that I can potentially pick a winner. Which I won't do, I won't say who's the winner on this, but when we get into the actual system, you'll see there's only two people that have entered into the competition. Um, and it's probably that's you know, lots of reasons behind that. Maybe because I'm giving away a digital copy of a game, and this is majority of people who use the website are tabletop gamers. Um, but I made the obviously the link there being the Warhammer piece, so potentially in future I'll make the prize more. You know, model based, game based rather than a, a digital copy. I just happened to have this and, and thought it'd be a good price to give away. Um, but I'm really happy that two people did get involved and it means I can take a look at what they've done. Uh, also, this is, you know, kit bashing's not everyone's cup of tea. It's definitely something I'm not that great at. Uh, you know, I, I can make models, paint models, but having that you know, having that skill to make something quite unique out of, out of bits and pieces almost, or, mo or you know, customizing a model. So, anyway. Lots of reasons, but I'm really glad two people got involved, and let's jump into it now. So the first one we've got is the Starlight Company. Now it doesn't tell me straight away who who works on it, so we'll look straight away who does that. And it's Alessia2590 is the name. Now I'm just going to pop this into view. There's a button, if you ever come into the project system, it often puts it in the order of the latest update, which means you don't really see the progress, you see the progress in reverse order, if that makes sense. So I always click view oldest entry first, and then you can see what this individual's done. So they talk about the blanks here. Uh, so this is the models before they're kit bashed, <coughs> which I think is really cool. You can see where these things came from. So you've got, um, sorry, what a bit of something in my mouth there. Uh, you've got this 40k Imperial Guard General. You've got um, some cultist leaders. Uh, this is a 40k witch hunter priest. So already you're in the 40. Although the kit bashing, you know, the genre is definitely in the fantasy world. Some of the blank, some of the beginning models are actually fantasy uh, 40k base. So that's quite cool. Uh, this is a lovely model, old school. Um, you know, sisters of Avalon, fant high, high elf, and also some high elf phoenix guard, and then a fantasy imperial handgun. So much more classic uh, fantasy characters, and obviously a chaos warrior as well. And this is what they did. So we can see here them starting to sort of cut the heads off and the arms off and the weapons off. It's got some nice gory effects there. Uh, and sort of swap bits around so you start to get more fantasy feel for these guys. Uh, this is them taking shape. I love the coat on this guy. It's very, very cool. <laughs> he's getting some very... He's getting, that's definitely an old um, uh, lizard... Um, um, what are they called? What are the guardsmen called? But uh, yeah, a... T uh, you know, Seraphim warrior armor, a warrior's shield. That's very, very cool. And obviously the part of a, a pole axe there on top. Uh, the warrior's getting much more, this is the high off warrior, getting that sort of uh, more like um, uh, an imperial um, soldier's kind of headdress. Yeah, that's a great look. I mean, that's really cool. That The way they've, they've tatted up the cloak there is very, very cool. You know, that's proper just sort of gouging bits out and making it look very tattered and weathered. This is our guy with his two-handed longsword. 
very cool and there we go another guy with these you know the musket and you can see where they came from I don't want to keep scrolling up and down but you know you can see the elements of the original models and how they then became what they've become so I think that's really really cool and great skill to do this right to make the bits match up and actually sort of you know use green stuff to carve them in all of this kind of uh, work is is really sort of hard and intricate and there you go there's that there's that um cultist guy who now just you know he's got a one-handed crossbow and a sword where before he had a you know a gun so it's very very cool and they've also i think they've done some work on the cloak there uh yeah he's got himself a backpack with some books and stuff in it that's really nice so we're getting some color on them now so primed, getting some base colours down so you can see them. They're all getting a very, their very own sort of classic colour. So like the red, the purple, the green, you know, uh, and the blue. Classic kind of like this is the character for each bit. I've done that before in, in tabletop games where, you know, normally you would have a meeple that's the green one, the blue one, the red one, and the yellow one. Where where if you do this with character pieces, it almost you know straight away that that's a character to you know an individual character. So that's quite cool. And again, some washes on them. And what's nice here is the individual, you know, because they've taken loads of pictures, you can see every step. So it talks about which wash they've used and, and where they've used it. And you can see that straight away. So we keep scrolling down. And then some dry brushing. See, every single step is described. Which is really nice. That's looking, that's already starting to take a good shape. Nice. You know, the wash has done a great job there. The highlights doing a, the uh, dry brush is doing a great job. I'm interested to see how this one turns out if it's staying in this kind of white cloak. Let's keep going down. Nice. I like that. I mean, that tattered cloak is looking really good. I really like that. And then you get into some more fine details, and you can see this. This is going to look. Oh, you just know this is going to look great. I'm just going to keep scrolling. Oh wow! Look at the all of a sudden the transformation in this guy. Very vibrant colours. Looks very good. It's very almost like um, cell shaded, right, from video games. Again, do love that cloak. I love the lightness here. It looks even more frayed and, and sort of, you know, it looks in very poor condition. Like he's been through the wars, this guy. Uh, there's that, there's that uh, lizard man sh uh, shield. Looking very good. Again, another great cloak. Yeah. I love how they go from this picture to boom. There's <laughs> loads of work's been done in between those two pictures. <laughs> Looking very good. And that's it. So that's um, the last update on this. Oh, sorry about that. My mobile phone just fell on the floor. My videos always have something happening in them. That was that one. Um, so I think that's the last update on this. Um, so what can I say about this one? It's a great, you know, clearly it's not finished. The individual hasn't got down to doing the base or that yet. But from what I can see, loads of effort got in, loads of skill around real kit bashing where you've actually, you know, taken miniatures, added bits, taken bits away. I'll keep going back to this green cloak because for me, this is, for, on this project, that for me is is a great piece of work. That's really drawn me in. I love the colour shading there. I don't know if they realise how good that is. For in my eyes, that's fantastic. I love that that space there where it looks really frayed and really like it's a tattered old cloak. Great work there. And if I haven't already thumbed that up, and I'm going to leave a comment as well because uh, that is uh, for me. And I, I've given loads of comments on this anyway, um, but uh, I'm going to keep doing that because that that for that cloak just jumps out of the picture at me and punches me in the face which is always a nice thing so yeah so that was the first project so we're going to go back and look at the second one so this was uh, and if you come out if you do come over to the website definitely come in here drop a whole bunch of you know skills and ideas into these things because it really makes people feel like you know people are looking at their project and noticing what they're doing i've already gone through on a bunch of them and done it but please you know give this project some love because it definitely deserves it so this was alessia 2590 well done really like it great job
Let's go back, um, back again. And let's go into the kit bash challenge. <clears throat> uh, and this is Doug the Fug 1644. Uh, and let's go to the oldest first and scroll our way down. Now already I can see from the sort of like the picture that a lot of work's been done on this, you know. So this is an updated picture of where we are. So this was the inspiration. Um, uh, am I on the oldest one first? Yes, I am. So this one, um, let me just find where the work begins because it talks about the build process uh, and the bases. But straight away, like if I, let's just go from the top. Let's just go from the top and talk about it as we go. Yeah, we've got some real effort gone in here around sort of the weapon. You know, the weapon choices. This kind of must hand musket. You can definitely imagine that being there. The hand axe with the with the. I mean, that's great. <laughs> to me, it just looks great. Right, it's not over the top. I like the sort of you know the the build here and then the splat going up the axe it looks very nice. Uh, if you find down here, you'll see that um, you know just good good faces. I can even see the eye there's very nice, nice paint job. And then this bit on here, which if I remember rightly, reading into the writing, this is like a squashed rat. Right, this is just like bits of fur and and skin, and then this kind of you know bone shape here where he's just either hit it with the sort of the end of the axe or he's stamped on it uh, which is very very cool <laughs> and this is from, from all different bits and pieces here so I know there's some frost grave bits in here because they make some great boxes for doing kit bashing uh, I think right here it says there's warlord games as a pike um, and bits and pieces so it really is from all over the place proper proper effort into kit bashing and and that you know that piece there just looks disgusting right so yeah, really like this one. And if we keep going down, I believe there is more. Uh, and there's loads of you know, loads of description here telling you how he painted it, what he used. You know, lots of description, really in depth. And that's what I like to see as well. Someone who's not just posting. And I'm terrible at this. I post pictures, but then don't really post any detail. But this person's really taken the time. You know, this isn't one minute's effort. This is. I'm going to post a picture. And I'm going to spend five minutes writing what I did. And then a bit more, and then a bit more, and so on. So for those reasons, it's really good. You know, it's great. This talks about the paint job, gives the story to the individual. There we go. Look, this is the backstory for Edna Ratfila. You know, very very cool. And then we're into another one. So this is Captain Alaban Tonmun, Tonmunha. Oh, I'm never going to get that name right. But look at this guy. Like he's just. I mean, look at the size of this sword. <laughs> this is a ridiculous sized sword for this individual. Very sort of William Wallace-esque on that massive great big sword he has in the movie. Uh, yeah, so it talks about where these bits of body from North Star, um, you know, Foss Crossgrave, uh, then Conquest Games, Medieval Archers box, the head from. So really gone through the bits box here and found bits and then done a great paint job and really nice bases to go with it. Uh, and has a great look, right? It really looks nice, really well done. Again, just how he painted it, all the bit, all the detail, how he went through it all. Um, yeah, just effort, real effort, right? Real passion for the project, which is a fantastic thing to see. And then we've got the witch hunter, Mordikia von Malias. <laughs> no idea how to say that name. Uh, and again, detail, detail, detail. What he's done, even green stuff from various things, you know different bits from different boxes and where we couldn't find a bit uh, or he or she couldn't find a bit I'm pretty sure Doug's a he uh, but um, yeah just just F to done it himself I'll, I'll make that piece I need painting instructions detail stop backstory another great backstory <laughs> and then we're on to the next one so now we've got a uh, moral oaken sword dwarf ranger so into the build. So as you can see, this one's nice because unlike the others where you, you already got the painted pictures, this is more showing you the sort of core underbelly of it. So you can see where he's at the green stuff, some of the shoulder work and the kilt around the bottom here, or skirt, whatever you want to call it. Uh, chain mail. Yeah, there you go. So it's a bit like a, a kilt sort of thing. And then the paint job, and you can see the weaponry. <laughs> he looks like a really good dwarf, right? He's got this hammer he's going to go and splat some rats with. Uh, and there we go. Uh, the back, another backstory of um, the oaken, oaken sword. And that's it. So this was three miniatures. I'm pretty sure it was three, but you know, tons of detail, tons of skill, 
um, tons of effort put into not just doing the painting, but then also going and putting, you know, how I did it, the story, and then thinking of a backstory from, which is brilliant, right? That's that's real passion for the project. So that's very very cool. So well done, Doug. Um, great effort. Well done. So that's probably the end of the video right it's just I wanted to give these a bit of a review I'm gonna go and spend some time looking at them uh, and then I've got to pick a winner between the two of them that's gonna be pretty hard and I may have to think about um, you know, something I can do to, 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 to reward both of the people that, that got involved but there should be a winner right that's the right thing to do um, and that will get announced on the Beasts of War um, Saturday show coming up I believe uh, so thank you for doing that to both of the people that got involved. If I do this again in the future, I'd love to see some people get involved. If you've got any comments about what you would rather see in a competition, how you might get involved, or what the, if the prize was wrong, or or anything you want to say, just just mention it below in the comments section, and we can work on it for next time, right? And we can run better and better competitions each time because I really want to get involved um, and and you know share some of the hobby love with the people out there. Yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say on it. Thank you to the pair of you for getting involved. You're both worthy winners easily and neither of you will be empty handed, I promise. Uh, and I will see you all on the next video. Give the thumbs up, give us a like, give us a subscribe, follow me on Twitch if you'd be so kind. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye everybody. Bye bye. I always miss the button. That's because my mouse is over there. This should become the end of every my video is me missing the button. See you later.